Hi, my name is Josh Sweeney with Epic Culture, and welcome to our video series where we plan to bring you amazing content about great company cultures. Let's go see John Austinson. John, how's it going today? Hey Josh, good to see you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we appreciate your time. Um, go ahead and tell us a little about, about yourself and 10x5. So 10x5, uh, we are re going through a rebrand currently, uh, moving from pre Premium Suite Services over to 10x5. And what we do is we empower companies to 10x their businesses. So really rapid growth uh, services are what we provide. And uh, what that looks like is lead generation, lead conversion. So uh, you've got everything from digital marketing, media buying, ad production on the front end, driving leads. Then we've got an awesome client support center on the back end, converting leads into appointments. And all through the whole process, we've got technology interstream throughout. And uh, part of our rebranding is narrowing our focus, going from uh, working with just about any client out there to really working with the 5%. They're looking to 10X their businesses over the next five years. Got it. So they're growth. looking to go big. Looking to go big. They've got to have a growth mindset. They've got to be funded. They've got to have a model that can scale as we partner with them to drive their business. Okay. And, and talking about going big, I came in earlier today and saw this video right here. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what's going on here. I'm hoping the shot of myself doesn't pop up there. Uh, <laughs> last year we took the team skydiving. Uh, we are a values-based company. Uh, our values are courage, uh, acting as one team, entrepreneurs thinking, uh, leading with a servant's heart, and exceeding expectations. So uh, this was obviously a demonstration of courage. Uh, we took the entire team. Everybody jumped off the plane. Nice. It's the most scared I've ever been at the once. Right. The, well, yeah, I was fine going up, but once the door opened, it got real, uh, really fast. So was that a bonding moment for everybody? Kind of having that fear together? Absolutely a bonding moment that I get to live, relive every time I walk through the lobby here. <laughs> right. So uh, trying to figure out what that next challenge is. Uh, we do a lot uh, around like tough mutters and, and exercise together as a team, but uh, looking for that next big challenge. Awesome. Well, let's take a look at your space and hear right. more about what you're doing uh, for company culture. Certainly. You have this podcast room, yeah. right? And you're getting multiple people involved in podcasting. I'm assuming that involves your team as well as many other people. Um, so tell us a little bit about what you're doing here. Yeah, so with the podcast, uh, we're having a lot of fun with it. We're only a few episodes in. We had uh, the pleasure of having Mark Moses join us this past week, Jack Daly a few weeks ago. Not every name will be quite that big, but we are looking at bringing some folks that are recognizable or at least can add value to uh to our clients and to our audience, um, you know, is supporting the whole 10X5 brand in the market, but also being a value add. So, uh, you know, this is something that we do for our clients. It's time that we do it for ourselves. And um, it, we call the podcast The File Room. You can find it out on iTunes. Um, but The File Room, originally, the podcast was gonna take place in The File Room, but we found right. that the acoustics in here are actually better than, uh, <laughs> than our File Room, but it's still fun to, to keep it in the name. Um, but where we differentiate from other podcasts is it's not just bringing in speakers that are value adds that can talk about their own experience, but uh, we're going to have them share advice with us as we're a growing company, three million dollar company that's you know 35 employees. We aspire to be 60 million in five years. Well, instead of us just having a podcast in five years talking about how we did it, right. how about we learn along the way and take the audience through that journey um, and. From a recruitment standpoint, I think it's helpful because uh, something that's important to us is candor, and we're going to share not only the wins but also, uh, you know, the challenges, the losses. If we lose a key employee, you know, some of our awards, some of our learnings. Uh, so really, try to make it engaging to uh, to that audience. Bill Evans, our marketing uh, director, had the idea. We had no idea how to run a podcast, so we figured it out and just ran with it. Um, I think we were planning to launch it one week and we had Jack Daly in and we just decided to do it day of so it was very startup culture don't know how to do something figure it out and run with it but we've had fun with it so so one of the things I notice as we go through this environment is you have a lot of low-rise cubicles right and I've been in a lot of offices that you know they're stacked up to here and they say quiet please people at work at the end um, tell us a little bit about the environment that you want to have here. It's a very collaborative on. environment, which again, I think is a cost of entry for a lot of companies these days to attract the talent that you want. Uh, people are, are all about communicating, and uh, whether it be on Slack or whether it be uh, here in the office, you know, it's very much, it supports our value of one team. Um, but, you know, we were talking earlier about retention, and, you know, from a retention standpoint, you know, one thing that I'm 
big believer in is transparency and trust. And if uh, we open up the, the books to employees, every quarter we have a profit sharing plan that everybody's a part of. Every call center agent, every digital marketing member, every media time buying member, everyone's a part of that profit sharing plan and uh, creates that sense of ownership. We're also right. looking to roll out a phantom stock plan in the near future. So um, there are a lot of things you can do kind of on the financial side uh, to promote it, but the environment is a key, uh, key component as well. When we hire somebody, we send them kind of like a one-page quiz, asking them personal questions, what they like outside of the office, favorite actors, favorite food, um, basically just to give them a warm welcome and create that collaborative team environment that we just push day in and day out to uh, increase success of the company. Sean, what do you love most about working here? Just the opportunity and the environment. We got a lot going on, a lot of big things happening, and just to be a part of you know a business that's kind of starting out from ground one and just growing it. Then just also the collaborative culture. Um, you know, you can walk into any office and just throw out some ideas or figure stuff out and a lot of freedom really in my job where um, I do like Google and Facebook ads okay so I can really take budgets and you know put them to where things are doing the best without a lot of um, like um, bureaucracy like to go through I don't have to go ask for permission if I see something that's working I can run with it if I see something that's not performing well I slow down you know figure out what's going wrong and try to get that optimized awesome I was attracted to the company um, for their core values. I spent the last two or so years in army training to become a commissioned lieutenant. And coming from a structured environment with a very core set of values, um, I was looking for that in my civilian career. And I found that here. Um, I was looking for a company culture with a strong set of values to uphold and live every day. My favorite value would be to, uh, to lead with a servant's heart. Um, which to me it means giving back in everything that I do, um, where even through like the toughest days where I'm not at my A game, I think about who I'm working for and how I am making their lives better. And that it gives me the motivation to continue to do my best work every day. So John, you mentioned that you have a queen of fun, which sounds like an exciting and an amazing job. Um, with this position, is it a full-time position? It's not a full-time position. It's a uh, another hat that one of our great uh, employees works. works. Awesome. And what is her strategy or the company's strategy around uh, what she needs to really go after? What what makes it a, a fun environment? What And how does that impact retention as well? Yeah, absolutely. So it, again, it came up in a leadership meeting. I was not nominated to be the king of fun, <laughs> right. and I happily delegated it outwards. Um, ultimately, I believe it's my responsibility to own the values, to own the culture. But part of owning the culture as the CEO is putting the right people in the right seats. So right. Uh, with Lauren, uh, she, she was a natural uh, candidate for the role. And she is she works in social media for us. So she's okay. hopefully fun. If she's right. doing her job well, then she, she can get the message out fun. to the team. <laughs> just a great personality. Sits in the middle of the office uh, and just... Really, it's an infectious and uh, energy that she provides, and it really impacts the team around her. Uh, what that looks like on a tangible basis is you know, scheduling out of a great content calendar. So we have grilled cheese day, donut day, St. Patty's Day party, Easter egg hunt. You know, it's just lined up for us. Um, but then not only in those formal events, but in the more informal. She looks for ways to add fun, whether it be in the onboarding process with the lunches and the balloons, whether it be in uh, team meetings and, and you know just certain elements that we can impact there. And so she is thinking fun, whereas I'm thinking a lot of different things. I like fun, but I'm not always thinking fun. She, <laughs> right, she's right. thinking fun. and um, So it's just really been a great addition, uh, having her bring that to the table and um, you know, teams responded well, and it's, uh, right. it's from a recruitment standpoint, absolutely. We bring people into the office, they get to meet the team, they get to hear about what we're doing, what we're about, where we're headed, but then also uh, what it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. And having that fun aspect where people are excited to come to work, and um, at least that's what they tell me in the employee right. engagement surveys, <laughs> right. um, you know, it is very affirming and, and uh, it certainly helps on the recruitment side and the retention side. Awesome. And out of when you're doing your hiring now and you're recruiting people in, 
what are probably the three things you share that you feel are most unique? Why would they pick 10x5 to come work for? Yeah, well, I think I'm a little biased with my corporate background. <laughs> right. And what we found is a lot of people that have come here have a corporate background and they're willing to come here, um, oftentimes make a little less off the bat, but participate in the quarterly profit sharing and uh, get, get a piece of the phantom stock and you know be a part of a startup, a profitable startup, to get them be employed right. 36, 37, 38, and they understand the vision and where we're headed. So I, I'd say, that, you know, there's three things really. It's it's where we are today, mm -hmm. the progress we've made up to this point that gives them a lot of confidence in where we're heading. And right. um, ultimately, we're, we're flexible, whether it be unlimited PTO, great benefits package, um, but it's all about getting the results and, right. and having fun doing it along the way. So really, once we get them in the doors, they meet the team, uh, it, it's a pretty easy sell. You had a cadence to your meeting, right? You have rhythm, and one of those, one of the pieces of that rhythm is a weekly meeting. What do you call it? Yeah. So again, another learning. I, I learn a lot as I go along. I don't have it all figured out, but a learning for me. Uh, we follow EOS traction, so we have our cadence of meetings on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis. But one thing that became apparent was the messages in our level 10 meeting weren't making it down to every to the whole company. Right. And so uh, we instituted a weekly staff meeting a few months ago. We do it at noon on Wednesdays and we call it our hump day huddle. Okay. Everybody participates, um, you know, we go through announcements, we go through a number of different items, but we have uh, one of the teams present on the value. They pick a value for the week, they present on it and how it's been lived out just to reiterate in their minds how important that is. And then we also pick a team member of the week. Team members decided based on the uh, the value that they demonstrate. Okay, and uh, we get nominations, and um, the team member gets to come up here and select from our wheel of fun, and uh, you know, best prize Your here is a hundred dollars. Uh, well, <laughs> oh, oh I, I forgot we have a year of choice that increases the odds of one hundred. Nice. So I'll be stroking more checks here in the near future, but. Uh, the Thank team's you. really responded well to this, and right. it, we just believe in gamification. Lots of little contests throughout the week, throughout the month. Uh, we're moving to a new point system in the near future where uh, you earn points based on your workload and, and what you're able to accomplish. So instead of having just traditional KPIs, we'll translate those into points, and it'll create much more of that gamified, fun environment. Right. Um, we like to hire people that like to compete and like to right. win, and uh, so I think this will promote that. Okay, and a lot of people look at company culture and they hear they hear about all the fun things yeah. you're doing, right? And they think that's very fluffy, you know. Yeah. Like, when does the work really get done? So, uh, from your experience as an executive, right? You came from a more corporate background, yeah. is that correct? Absolutely. From your corporate background, how do you feel that you're you're striking the right balance between the fun, the retention, the culture, and getting what you need to get done as a business? Yeah, like you said, Josh, it certainly is a balance. And uh, you know, at the en end of the day, we hire and fire based on our values. And you know, but one of our values is not currently fun. Now we may add it, in, <laughs> right, but uh, right. that's where I said, hey, blind spot to me. Let's have more fun. And uh, you know, I delegated that out, and that was certainly a win. Uh, but coming from a corporate background where, you know, I, I feel in so many ways things are handed to you, you're working with the bureaucracy and everything that goes with that. Here, you get to have a stake in the ownership. So ultimately, I'll set the strategy, I set the direction, I hold uh, folks accountable, but they get to fill in a lot of the blanks around that company culture. So here are our values, run with them, we're not changing, but fill in the blanks. What does that look like and how, how can you impact it? And again, it goes back to that sense of ownership that uh, lets them be a part of it. Yeah, so you're taking those metrics and that accountability and you're overlaying the fun aspect of that. Absolutely. And as long as both of those come together, you're building a 10x business. Yeah, and, and we do, uh, just to ch it's one thing to say all this, but to uh, really make sure that we're in line with where we need to be. You know, there's obviously class store. We go out there, we check the reviews, uh, which have been overwhelmingly good so far. Um, awesome. But also we do quarterly employment engagement surveys. So. The only point of feedback that we're getting on a consistent basis is I want to be paid more, which I don't know if there's an employee <laughs> engagement survey out there that doesn't include that. But uh, but the feedback on the environment, on whether they look forward to coming to work, on uh, the team, uh, has been nothing but positive. Yeah. I keep saying, guys, give us something. We do it anonymously to try to get feedback, but uh, uh, it's been very encouraging uh, that we're, we're, we're learning every day, but we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the financial feedback. Do you happen to watch Billions? Yeah. So Good Billions show. is one of my Good favorite show. shows. And I, well, I'm going to give it away. Did you watch the one last night? I did not. All right. So it's comp season, right? And 
in that industry, uh, they go once a year in the show, right? Once a year, they're looking at the comp and what kind of raise do you get? What kind of huge multi-million dollar bonus are you going to get? And I think part of the epiphany and part of the feedback um, that Axelrod, Axe was getting mm -hmm. from the team was really, it's not actually about the money. You know, sometimes he's trying to make it about the money because that's what drives him mm -hmm. as a person, but other people want to see forward progress and they want to see other incentives mm -hmm. that really play into that. So I think it's interesting that you mentioned a couple of the items that you did today. Absolutely. So, you know, it benefits package because, you know, it works well with the, uh, you know, the financial package, but ultimately comes down to that recognition and having right. fun. Try to recognize my folks as much as I can, even if it's just on a Slack channel, call out good work. And then uh, we all know that it promotes it, but also promotes the environment. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.